to the complete story nine. Don't fight, you are all right. Today we'll talk about very important topic in the ICU, which is patient hypoxic desaturated with white lung. team will say it is cardiogenic pulmonitima. Medical will say it is pneumonia, it's pleural effusion. Nephro team will say it is overload. Don't fight, you are all right. Let us see. I was called to assess a 17 years old patient, known case of post traumatic RTA. Fracture left femur, unfortunately, post operative after internal fixation osteomyelitis. Drug induced acute renal failure on dialysis. The patient was hypertensive. Patient was intubated after an attack of generalized seizures. After seizure control and over the next week, the patient failed a trial of extubation twice because of both extubation, severe desaturation and hypoxia. Here is the x-ray after the second reintubation. As you see, the dialysis catheter, patient intubated, and he has white lung. What is going on? Cardiology will talk about cardiac, medical will talk about infection, nephro team will talk about overload, what is going on. Usually I start assessing of this gasping patient by looking for inferior vena cava. Because I believe I need to know is there is any cardiogenic element leading to full inferior vena cava, is there any obstructive element like pulmonary embolism in this patient will lead to full inferior vena cava. Our, inferior, our patient inferior vena cava is distended with decreased sensibility. You are talking about almost 10% distensibility. That means the patient is overloaded. Next, go to the heart to, say, to know why this inferior vena cava is fat. This is the <clears throat> barasternal long axis view. As you see here, the patient visual assessment of ejection fraction, you can talk about 40%, 40-45%. You have distended left atrium visually appear, <clears throat> distended left atrium. You have here, this is a descending aorta, there is anechoic fluids here around the heart, mild pericardial effusion, and here a pleural effusion. So, we have left ventricular dysfunction, we have distended left atrium, we have mild pericardial effusion, and we have a pleural effusion, left side pleural effusion. Let us see other view. Here is the fourth chamber view. Left atrial is ballooning. The contractility here looks better, 40 to 50 percent, but Definite, there is something going on in the heart of this patient. Let us see. Color view. Moderately, moderately severe <clears throat> mitral regurg. Moderately severe mitral regurg. Let us see. Putting the pulsed wave Doppler sample in the mitral valve and assessing for the diastolic dysfunction reveal large E wave and small A wave, large E wave and small A wave denoting restrictive pattern of diastolic dysfunction, which should denote overload, denote increased left atrial pressure, increased wedge pressure. So, fitting the bottle together for this patient, the patient definitely has a cardiac element of this dyspnea and white lung. He has a straight mouth, probably. He has mitral regurg. He is overloaded because advanced grade of diastolic dysfunction. This is definite there is a cardiac element for this patient of white lung. But is it enough? What is next? Next step is the cornerstone of critical care ultrasound in assessment of dyspnea, which is lung water assessment. After going to the heart and to know the cardiac element, you need to, to, to go to the lung to look for lung water. <clears throat> because white lung means wet lung. Ultrasound will give us a very good idea about lung water. What is the degree? What is the cause? It's very, very, very important assessing the dyspnea patient. Let us see. 
while going to the land you, you need to assess ask you, yourself two questions what is the degree of lung water this is the normal picture of lung scan putting the probe here in the intercostal space you will get transverse line with equally spaces between each other which should denote the reflection of ultrasound wave on the pleural line pleura is very good reflector the ultrasound will go to the pleura and reflect it back to the probe and reflect it back to the pleural line pleural line is good reflector will reflect it back to the probe and reflect it back to the pleural line and it will give this equally spaced transverse line which is the normal lung which is the dry lung what if the lung is became wet and they get interstitial edema you will start to see a vertical lines instead of transverse lines which is denoting B line, vertical line denoting B line coming from the pleural line and you denote interstitial edema in, 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 indicate a wet lung. If it's widely spaced, that means it is a mild degree of interstitial edema. But if it is dense B line with very narrow space in between and even like a curtain, curtain occupying all the field, that means it is severe interstitial edema. This is a picture of ground glass appearance in CT. This is the severe interstitial edema. We call this pulmonary edema. Okay? If you get dense B line with very narrow spaces in between or even absence of space in between, that means it is severe pulmonary edema. This is equal curless B line in X ray. If this is more B lines, if the intra alveolar become flooded by the fluids you will get consolidation you will get hepatization like this picture hepatization the lung would not no long no long no longer would become a lines no a lines no b lines it will be a tissue it will be hepatized it will be hepatization of the lung which is denoting consolidation which is denoting flooding of uh, fluids inside the alveoli okay this is the grades of lung water <clears throat> let us see here practically in real patient putting the please phase array probe in the intercostal space beginning from the microvicular line reveal a lines and you will get space by space midclavicular anterior axillary mid axillary you will see here start to get b lines in this space we get a b lines b lines a vertical line coming from the pleural line it's completely different than a line that means this is based there is wetness there is wet after that we start to get condensed b lines here condensed b lines with dirty pleura and at the same time this is advanced this is interstitial edema and after that in lower part we get this consolidation and we will see this white area of a roncogram you will get it clearly here now you will see it clearly now this is the air bronchogram this is a consolidation you uh, in this in this view of real lung ultrasound we can <clears throat> we can see in a lines in b lines condensed b lines and consolidation second when you see the condensed b lines which is dense b line with very narrow space in between you the picture is the pulmonary edema okay this is called b3 line because the distance between b, b line is only three millimeter this pulmonary edema you need to ask yourself a very important question this pulmonary edema is it cardiogenic or due to ARDS? is it cardiogenic or inflammatory this fluids is transudative fluids or exudative fluids it's very important and very practical questions you should ask yourself Fortunately, ultrasound clearly, and I believe it is the future to differentiate between cardiogenic pulmonary edema and non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema. It is the ultrasound. It is the future. It is the future. Believe me, you need to know it now because you will force it to know in the future. Let us see. First, this is a cardiogenic pulmonary edema. Look for the pleural line. It, it is thin line, a smooth line. <clears throat> Look for it is thin line, thin pleural line, and smooth line with homogeneous 
edema you will see b lines all over <coughs> or at least in the upper and the mid area you will see the b lines all over at least in the upper and the mid zone you will not get any space free of the b line so in cardiogenic pulmonary edema the pleural line is thin it's less than three millimeter it is smooth and the b line will be homogeneous all over the spaces in the upper and the mid zone. It's very important. Look for this again. <clears throat> B-line homogeneous in occupying all spaces. And the pleura is very thin. And nothing below the pleural line. Nothing below the pleural line. Nothing below the pleural line. Okay. Let us see in the non-cartogenic pulmonary edema. This is base has B line and this is base has A line. It is heterogeneous. This is base has B line, B line, and this is base has A line. So it's heterogeneous. You will get space B line and you can expect another space will have an A line. So it is heterogeneous. B line, it's not homogeneous all over the area. This is the first discrimination between cardiogenic and non cardiogenic pulmonary Second, you will get this very picture, which is very unique to the non cardiogenic pulmonary edema and the ARDS, which is subpleural consolidation. You will get this hypoechoic area, anechoic area of the just below the pleural line. This is the B line, and you will get here subpleural consolidation. This is the unique for ARDS. This is unique for ARDS. It's very important. An area, an area hypoechoic or anechoic, just below is the pleural line, and there is B line coming from. So this picture, it is non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema. It is ARDS, and the other picture, as you see, very thin pleural line and the homogeneous. It is cardiogenic. Really, it's discriminative in more than 90% of cases. It's sensitive in more than 90%. It is the future. The last step is the pleural thickness you need to measure the pleura if it's more than three millimeter it's going with ARDS if it's less than three millimeter it is going with cardiac pulmonary edema I will repeat again I will repeat again thin smooth pleural line with homogeneous B line all over it is cardiogenic pulmonary edema thick dirty pleural line with sub pleural consolidations and heterogeneous pulmonary edema it's going with ARDS it is very, very helpful to discriminate, and it's more than 90% specific and sensitive for differentiation between cardiogenic and non cardiogenic pulmonary edema. Back to our patient. Here is the upper area of our, the lung of our patient. The pleural line <coughs> is seen, homogeneous. No subpleural consolidation. If a definite, there is pulmonary congestion, and it is expected because of overload, because of diastolic dysfunction, and because of my, moderate mitral gauge and stress myopathy. This was in the upper and the mid zone of our patient. Exploring all lung field and exploring the lower zones of our patient reveal this area of consolidation, this area of hepatization of the lung, which is going with pneumonia. This was in the right side of the patient, and the wind exploring the left base, there is another dirty B lines, dirty and sick pleura, dirty B lines, sick pleura, and as you see here, <coughs> there is also a dirty fluid, dirty equus in the pleural fluid, that means it's syndemonic effusion. You see here, it's very, very clearly, sick pleura, dense B lines, and the dirty fluids ecogenic, with equus inside, equus inside the fluids, denoting again a lot in one shot, a lot of information by one shot of ultrasound probe. Again, don't fight, you are all right. This young male has a stress myopathy with mitral gauge related to sepsis, bilateral lower loop pneumonia with synemonic pleural effusion, and he is on the overload side with high left atrial pressures and severe diastolic dysfunction, and here is the cause of failed extubation. Thank you a lot, and see you in another. Don't fight. You are all right. Bye-bye.